Hey guys, it's Marty and thanks for stopping by today. I hope you're having a great day. We're going to take a look at these Holbein Artist Watercolor Sample Sheets today. I've reviewed the, these Japanese paints before in the past. I think I got the 12 color set, 12 or 18 color set. Um, but this comes with all 108 colors in the line. This is test sheet number one. We'll take a look at test sheet number two here as well. But basically, um, Holbein came out with these sample sheets and I just think it's great. More and more watercolor uh, companies or paint companies should come out with these sample sheets. It's a great way on uh, a very affordable way to test out the paints and decide what colors you want as an artist. So they come in these nice plastic sleeves. They're super inexpensive. I picked these up for $6.50 at the greatest little art store in the universe, Wet Paint. You can pick them up at wetpaintart.com. Uh, tell them I sent you and they'll hook you up. So on this uh, chart amongst these colors, um, it gives you a lot of information, including the um, light fastness, or they call it permanence on the sample sheet, how many pigments are contained in each color, and uh, just a, a, a bunch of different information about the colors and stuff. So these sheets are, um, like I said, they come in these sleeves. You just pull them out of the sleeve and they're ready to go. You're gonna, I'm gonna use a Pentel water brush today, right here. And um, all I have to do to get these colors to activate is just put a little water on the brush, uh, squeeze the, the brush a little and bam, uh, Bob's your uncle. All right, so today I'm gonna to swatch out these colors. I'm also gonna put uh, these to the test by doing a painting and then stick around at the end. I'll give you some final thoughts on these and some tips and tricks uh, for how to save yourself a few dollars as well. Okay, so here we go. And the first thing you notice with these paints, and one thing I had to learn with the Holbein Japanese paints is you need to add the right amount of water. If you don't add the right amount of water um, and they're too thick, they'll be more opaque or gouache-like um, in their effects. So they'll seem like they're, they're, they're opaque paints, but they're not. You just need to add a little bit more water because these are transparent paints like in the European traditional transparent watercolor paint. Um, and they've been making these for, I don't know, 100 years or so. But um, you, you notice that right away. You just have to add a little bit more water, but you can see the vibrancy in the paint here. It really pops. We'll talk about uh, pigment and uh, durability or light fastness here as rated by the company. I do separate ratings. I still have my tests for Holbein underway. Uh, it takes like three to six to eight months, sometimes a year, to really uh, test the light fastness of these paints. But um, So I can't uh, guarantee that the company's um, light fast ratings are completely accurate, but we'll uh, talk about what their ratings are uh, here in a minute. This, they, like I said, they come in sh two sheets, sheet number one and sheet number two, both have a little bit more than 50 uh, colors on the sheet. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm sampling the sheet. So I'm not gonna swatch out every single color on the sheet. Rather, uh, I will swatch out just a good variety of colors here for you to get a general sense of, of these. And there's some colors I really like, and at the end, I'll give a little check mark uh, to the colors that that really performed well for me and that I like uh, overall with these paints. But I wanted to try a nice variety because Holbein uh, really does make some, some very nice paints. Now, recently there's been some controversy on the channel. Uh, some of the uh, subscribers uh, to the channel have said, hey, how come Holbein keeps their pigment information so secret? Why don't they post their color charts where they're easy to find on their website? Uh, what's the deal there? And um, before we get into comparison here, I'll answer that question. So it's really simple. Um, I don't know exactly why they don't post these in a more accessible way, but the information comes on these sample sheets. And if you email or call Holbein, they'll send you out their color, uh, their tech data sheet, and you get all the pigment information right there. It might be trade secrets, or maybe they're trying to protect uh, you know, some kind of proprietary information they have, but I don't know uh, why they don't. They should uh, publish it and be more transparent about it. Maybe they're uh, like worried about people or competitors knowing about exactly what pigments they're adding to their paint. I'm just not sure. I did not get a straight answer from the company uh, spokesman I talked to, but yet and still, 
uh, the information is available. You just might have to do a little extra work to get it. So here we go with a little bit of comparison here on these watercolor paints. So I wanted to take these, swatch them out, let them dry, and then pull out some of my old uh, watercolor sheets and sort of show you uh, head to head what they look like against some of the other um, you know, artist brand watercolors. So first thing first, uh, let's compare them to the tube paints. So are the, the sample dots different from the tube uh, paints? I don't really sense that there is much of a difference other than my uh, the fact that I didn't put a lot of water on these paints the first time I used them and I got sort of that opaqueness I, I mentioned a little earlier. Um, so next to these where I, I knew better now, I got some feedback from some of the subscribers and other people on the internet. They're like, hey, with Holbein paints, you need to add a little bit more water to get that transparency. So you could just kind of see where they sort of look opaque here on the first, uh, the tube sample here I did against uh, these um, sample sheet dots here that I painted. These are the Daniel Smith. Um, they also, Daniel Smith, sells a sample sheet, and I really commend um, paint companies for doing this because, again, as I mentioned, it really helps the artist decide what colors they need. I don't want to collect every color from every brand. I just want to be able to use the colors I need to create uh, the best paintings I can. This, this is the Lucas Aquarelle paint, watercolor paints. They're really a nice, affordable, good quality paint. Uh, that I did a review on as well and really enjoyed using. You can see the colors are pretty comparable here. Very nice. Um, I think that the Lucas mixed a little bit better for me than the Holbein did, but um, that's my opinion. Anyway, th here's the Sennelier paints. Uh, these are the very, very fine French paints made with honey. Uh, so they're really nice. They have a, a nice luminosity, and I just love... Uh, the color and the glow in those paints and you can see um, they're pretty exceptional and as far as color and brightness there um, they're just about on par but in terms of sort of the subtle uh, subtlety and the glow and the fineness of the uh, the granularity and the dissolvability the they're just great they're very superior now this uh, the Schmico watercolors are the watercolors I use every day in my work and um, they're my professional grade uh, watercolor and they're number one on my list. So um, Schmenke above all others uh, is just a very excellent uh, German made watercolor paint and I think um, uh, much better than than most of the paint watercolor paints out there. These are Turner Artist watercolors also made in Japan and again another paint that I found somewhat opaque uh, but learned my lesson with after a while. I don't know what it is about the Japanese and Korean paint makers but their paint is very like thick, so you gotta you gotta put it on with a little bit more water than you're used to. These are the very nice American Journey uh, watercolors, also known as Da Vinci watercolor uh, brand. They're the exact same paints, and um, they're very nice. And I think just uh, uh, just maybe a touch uh, below, um, and just a fraction below maybe the Holbeins. They're really exceptional. Uh, very nice paints. I enjoy using them and uh, I, I do use a few of their colors in my current palette. So you can see they're pretty nice. And they're affordable too. They're not very expensive. So if you're looking for an inexpensive artist grade paint, uh, that's a really nice choice. Okay, well let's put these paints to the test. I will do a small uh, landscape here um, and We'll see how well uh, the paints uh, you know, do on, on actual watercolor work. Um, they do uh, behave a little bit differently, as I mentioned before, than uh, traditional European or American pa watercolor paints, and that you probably have to add a little bit more water than you're used to, but um, still, nonetheless, uh, they work really well. So here goes.
Well, that, that's it really. Just wanted to uh, give these a really quick try and um, I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I liked uh, the results and I like the way the watercolors behave. Here's my swatch sheet, but on my swatch sheet, I put a check mark next to the paint colors I can recommend and the ones I really liked. I also put uh, information on how many pigments are in each paint. So if you pause it right here and look for P1, P2, P3, that's the number of pigments in the paint. And also the stars denote um, the company's claim for light fastness. So three stars is obviously uh, very light fast according to the company. Two is moderately light fast and one is somewhat light fast according to the company. Again, uh, I just put check marks by the ones I really liked. Most of them are single pigment, uh, three star uh, paints. So uh, take a look at that uh, when you get a chance. Um, you can just pause the uh, video and look there. Well, it was really fun to look at these Holbein sample sheets. I just love the idea of sample sheets. Don't forget to follow me on the website at owingsart.com. Just scroll down, click follow, and you'll get monthly updates on art supply reviews, musings about art, general life stuff. So, well, this has been a really fun look at the Holbein watercolor sample sheets. I'd really love to hear from you guys on what you think. And hopefully this puts some of the controversy to bed about Holbein's transparency. I mean, they could stand to be more transparent. Yes, I agree uh, with people who, who made that complaint, but it's also easy enough to get the information if you just ask for it or, or look for it. And anyway, I published it on my swatch sheet so it's there for you anytime you want and I'll put a, a post up on the website as well about that but listen so I appreciate you stopping by thanks for watching the video I hope you guys are having a great day so long for now this has been Marty for owingsart.com bye bye